Hi, good morning, welcome back. We're in Ecclesiastes today, and I'm gonna do my best to get us all the way through to the end, which is not that difficult scene. It's only 12 chapters, so it's Ecclesiastes 1 through 12. Um, I read it and studied before I came on today, but um, only because I thought personally that it was a little bit confusing. I had picked it up two days ago, read it, skimmed it, the notes, and then I find out, uh, fun fact, um, it's considered one of the five books of wisdom and poetry in the Old Testament. The other books are, and I'll just read them, it's Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, written by Solomon, King Solomon, and then the Songs of Solomon. Those are the five of wisdom, and I think that those are interesting because Proverbs, I look at as um, guidance in how we should act. I look at Psalms as petitions and songs and prayer and poetry. Then you talk about uh, wisdom with one of the greatest men in the Bible, I think, um, Job, when we're just looking at a life and how they carried it and how they still uh, came to know God. So I, I think it's interesting that it starts off with Job and then it ends with the Song of Solomon or the Song of Songs, um, which is also another good book. I'm barely halfway through reading this, um, the word. And in high school, I don't know how far I got. I, I did it also. But um, as I dive in and we get closer to God, I hope that's you. Maybe this isn't your first time. But if it's your first time, as we grow, as we grow closer to God in the word, there's a lot of responsibility that goes with that. And so today I, I'm convicted because Ecclesiastes made more sense to me today when I looked at it as being written by um, King Solomon and the fact that he's a preacher. He's uh, King David's son. Um, he, he looked everywhere for the answers to life. That's what Ecclesiastes is about. The, the meaning of life and his search for it. And um, I studied listening this morning to, uh, let me just give him credit, I think, Skip Heitzig. And um, it's just a good read. It really is. And it's one you, you want to go back and uh, read on yourself. But there's a lot, I mean, you can take, of course, there's a lot in the whole word, but there's just so much. But it ends with such a solid and infinite, meaning eternity, um, conclusion. And so let me just skip right there in case you want to turn me off, okay? So we're going to go to the very end. And it is in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Um, for, we'll, we'll read verse 13 and 14. This is King Solomon's conclusion after searching for the meaning of life. Um, it says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. He sees all. He knows all. And all he's asking you to do is keep his commandments. And the goal should be heaven, eternity with him and let me not uh forget to add that the only way to heaven is through jesus christ for he says in john three sixteen, whoever believes in me shall not perish but have eternal life and i pray if you're somebody that is questioning their salvation and i'm glad i'm doing it right now so you can kick me out of your off your phone or your tablet if, if i offend i'm sorry it's just my goal with this responsibility with diving in the word is that I say it just how I feel it, just as I see it true, just how I perceive it, and that I share it while we have life and breath in our lungs, because it's not too late then. There was an example by Skip Heitzig where he, he said uh, he hates speaking at funerals of you know, the non-believer, because what's true is true, and you, you can't make it sound any better, except to say, let's honor their memory by not ending up like that not ending up with uh the time run out and you don't accept god into your life and i know i'm not going to make a lot of followers there's a lot of people that believe other things other gods other and that's for them this is for me 
this for me and for you if you're looking for uh, Jesus Christ if you're looking at somebody that believes in heaven and that um, time is content it's eternity it's where are you gonna be for eternity it's not you live and die, which is also brought up in Ecclesiastes. It's not that simple. You're born and then you work so hard at being successful just to pass it on to somebody else. That's not the goal, if you know God. But in, in this reading, Solomon, King Solomon doesn't even look up to God until he's done all the searching, um, all the living of youth and trying to find joy in all kinds of things. And then it isn't until midway that we see he starts changing his focus and he starts looking up to God and he starts realizing that is what's going to fill his soul um, and make him feel, well, not make him feel, but complete that, um, that void. So that's just my little intro. I still want to pray and then we'll jump right in. Um, so hope you're hanging with me today, this morning. Please join me. Father God, thank you for your lesson. Thank you for your word. As always, I'm humbled to read it. And I ask that you forgive me. I ask that you forgive any of us that offend, that take your name in vain, that take this lightly. I don't, Lord. I pray for the listener, wherever they are, wherever they are in their walk with you, I pray that you bless them. Draw them in closer to you. May they see things as you would have them see it. May they be... Uh, bold enough to accept you into their life, bold enough to make that decision that says, I believe in God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and that you died for me in my sins on that cross in Calvary, that you descended into hell, that you rose again and are seated at the right hand of the Father, and you are coming again. And the people you're coming for are your bride, your church, those that know you and call you Lord. So I pray whatever their circumstances right now, whatever they are facing, I pray that they call on you. I pray that they look up. I pray that they look up to you, Lord, for the answers, for the truth, for real joy, for the real meaning of life. I'm humbled and I, I thank you, Lord, for blessing me with another day, for blessing us with another day. And I pray for those that are suffering, that their outlook is, is dim because they don't have any hope in, in believing in the one true Father. I pray that they can. I pray that as we dive into the word, that there are more people that share their testimony, share your word, and that your kingdom only continues to grow until you return. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. So Ecclesiastes chapter 1. The vanity of life. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem, Solomon. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. He's speaking about himself as, um, as a preacher. What profit has a man from all his labor in which he toils under the sun? Our generation, one generation passes away and another generation comes, but the earth abides forever. The sun also rises and the sun goes down and hastens to the place where it arose. The wind goes, goes toward the south and turns around to the north. The wind whirls about continually and comes again on its circuit. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. To the place from which the rivers come, there they return again. All things are full of labor. Man cannot express it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. That which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which it may be said, See, this is new. It has already been in, in ancient times before. There is no remembrance of former things, nor will there be any remembrance of things that are to come by those who will come after. This is the beginning, um, Solomon's outlook in the beginning. And he's just stating the obvious, you know, um, the grief of wisdom, verse 12. I am the preacher. I, the preacher, was king over Israel and Jerusalem. And I set my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all that is done under the heavens. Under heaven. I'm sorry. Um, that's a conversation for another day. Heavens instead of heaven. Um, 
but I don't want to add more to our study. Um, so let me continue again. By wisdom concerning all that is done under heaven, this burdensome task God has given to the sons of man, by which they may be exercised. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and indeed all is vanity and grasping for the wind. It's almost like he's saying it's all for nothing because it's already... Its end is known. It's The end is foretold. We know that when we are born, we're going to die. So right now, he's screaming. This is King Solomon. Remember, he had asked for wisdom um, be when he was king over Jerusalem. And God granted it, granted it to him so much so that he was also a philosopher in looking at the things such as music and stars. And, and um, he's just out for knowledge. So verse 15. What is crooked cannot be made straight, and what is lacking cannot be numbered. I command with my heart, saying, Look, I have attained greatness, and have gained more wisdom than all who were before me in Jerusalem. My heart has understood great wisdom and knowledge, and I set my heart to know wisdom, and to know the madness and folly I perceived, that this also is grasping for the wind. For in much wisdom is much grief. And he who increases knowledge increases sorrow. He who increases his knowledge increases his responsibility. I took this on as something that would be a good idea to get through the word of God and to be held accountable with other people that listen and to comment with one another on what we were reading. But it's end up being something that I want to hold on to and I want to share because it's, it's like um, I found the truth, right? You found the truth and you want... The people you love, the people you know, anybody that's encountered you throughout your days to know the truth also. Because who would do that? Who would see somebody starving and not give them something to eat if they had it? So much responsibility comes with it because it, it's not easy to share. They hated Jesus. A lot of people don't believe in God. A lot of people don't believe in looking up to the heaven. They don't believe in eternity. They believe that all their success is going to be made right here on earth. And it's just that that outlook that keeps them trapped um so please i hope i don't stay with me don't go away just because i said that so let's jump let's continue it's, it was a good reading so i have a lot to say and <clears throat> for in much wisdom is much grief and he who increases knowledge increases sorrow chapter two the vanity of pleasure i said in my heart come now i will test you with mirth Therefore, enjoy pleasure, but surely this also was vanity. I said of laughter, madness, and of mirth. What does it accomplish? I searched in my heart how to gratify my flesh with wine, with guiding my heart and wisdom, and how to lay hold on folly, till I might see that was good for the sons of men to do under heaven all the days of their lives. I made my works great. I built myself houses and planted myself vineyards. I made myself gardens and orchards. I planted all, all kinds of fruit trees. In them I made myself water pools from which to water the growing trees of the grove. I acquired male and female servants and had servant born in my house. Yes, I had greater possessions of herds and flocks than all who were in Jerusalem before me. I also gathered for myself silver and gold and the special treasures of, ki of kings and of the provinces. I acquired male and female singers the delights of the sons of men, and musical instruments of all kinds. So I became great and excelled more than all who were before me in Jerusalem. Also, my wisdom remained with me. He's not gloating. He's stating the fact that in his search for wisdom, it's almost like he got bored <clears throat> searching for joy to fill up whatever, whatever he's looking for. He's searching for the meaning of life. But all of these things he has, he has silver and gold. He has flocks. He has... Everybody under his authority being king. And so he is not um, he is not satisfied yet. So he calls it vanity of vanities. Um, verse 10. Whatever my eyes desired, I did not keep from them. I did not withhold my heart from any pleasure. For my heart rejoiced in all my labor. And this was my reward for, from all my labor. Then I looked on all the works that I, that my hands had done. And on the labor in which I had toiled, and indeed all the vanity and grasping for the wind, there was no profit under the sun, the end of the wise and the fool. Then I turned myself to consider wisdom and madness and folly. For what can the man do who succeeds the king? 
only what he has already done. So saying that there's nothing else you're going to find. Then I saw the wisdom excels folly as light excels darkness. Like um, wisdom is better than to be a fool. Um, the wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walks in darkness. Yet I myself perceive that the same events happen to them all. Whether you whether you acknowledge the light or you live in darkness, he's saying that the same events are going to happen in the both. And that is true. The believer and the unbeliever, we're still going to have blood running through our veins. We're still going to get up in the morning and breathe in oxygen. We're alike in those ways, but it is the outlook that is different. Verse 15. So I said in my heart, as it happens to the fool, it also happens to me. And why was I <clears throat> and why was I then more wise than I said in my heart? This is also vanity. To think that he is wiser than everybody else's vanity, it's vain. It's he's he's operating out of his ego. And he asked himself why? If if the end is the same for both of us, is the fool that doesn't know God in a better state because he doesn't know that there is a God? Many will argue that point. I won't touch it right now. <clears throat> Verse 16. For there is no more remembrance of the wise than of the fool forever. Since all that now is, is will be forgotten in the days to come. And how does a wise man die? As the fool. Therefore I hated life because the work that was done under the sun was distressing to me. For all his vanity and grasping for the wind. He wanted it to mean something. Like that success, that, that desire to complete something. You know how you you go out to play a game and you win and then all of that like um adrenaline and all of that like celebration it only happens in that moment and then once it's over it's over N when's the next game it's just it's exactly that he's never he's not satisfied yet 18 then i hated all my labor in which i had toiled under the sun because i must leave it to the man who will come after me and who knows whether he will be wise or a fool yet he will rule over all my labor in which I toiled and in which I have shown myself wise under the sun. How awful. So he's so worried about who's going to take all of his <laughs> his legacy when he, he's gone that his eyes are not looking in the right direction. Because to me, the right direction would be wanting to share that wisdom, wanting to grow people. But it's vanity. This is also vanity. Therefore, I turn my heart and despaired of all the labor in which I had toiled under the sun. For there is a man whose labor is with wisdom, knowledge, and skill, yet he must leave his heritage to a man who has not labored for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. For what has man for all his labor and for the striving of his heart with which he has toiled under the sun? For all his days are sorrowful and his work burdensome. Even in the night his heart takes no rest. This also is vanity. Uh, for right now, I will say, when he says vanity, he's saying it's um, it's it's um, all put in the wrong place. So the the one that works hard, toils and labors, he's not wrong for doing so, but he's never satisfied, and he does worse than that. He doesn't want to leave it to somebody else. He still wants to hold on to it. You can't take it with you. <clears throat> Verse twenty four, nothing is better for a man than that he should eat and drink and that his soul should enjoy good in his labor. This also I saw was from the hand of God for who can eat or who can have enjoyment more than I, for God gives wisdom and knowledge and joy to a man who is good in his sight. But to the sinner, he gives the work of gathering and collecting that he may give to him who is good before God. This also is vanity and grasping for the wind to compare yourself to somebody that is, um, that's also working and 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 to say that you are wiser than them, that's that's vanity you're judging for god gives wisdom and knowledge and yes he does if you seek him but look at we're in almost chapter three and he's still not looking in the right direction um right now we're hearing how he is comparing his life's successes his toils everything he's done and still not reaching his goal that hole that is um lacking chapter three everything has its time like the song um, but let me read it to everything there is a season a time for every purpose under heaven a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted a time to kill and a time to heal 
a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. I haven't forgotten what the state of the world is right now. And I'm not even, I don't even have the full picture of all of that's going around what's happening, all the, the events in the world. But yes, there is a time of war and there is a time of peace and everything has its season and its time. But we have to remember to give God his time and um, look to him to fill that void. Let me continue. The God-given task. What profit has the worker from that in which he labors? I have seen the God-given task with which the sons of men are to be occupied. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work that God does from the beginning to the end. Because there would be no faith if, if we knew everything. I know that nothing is better for them than to rejoice and to do good in their lives. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. Yes, it is the gift of God. That's why he says you reap what you sow. But he also wants our time with him. He wants our devotion. He wants us to obey his commandments. He wants us to draw close to him. Um, 14. I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. But remember, God knows everything already. It's already foreseen by him. So to walk around like it's uh, like we know, we'd be in the wrong to do so because we don't. We don't know everything. Only God sees. God does it. That men should fear before him. That which he is, that which is, has, has has already been and what it is to be has already been and god requires an account of what is past moreover i saw under the sun in the place of judgment wickedness was there and in the place of righteousness iniquity was there i said in my heart god shall judge the righteous and the wicked for there is a time there for every purpose and for every work because he will judge everything i said in my heart concerning the condition of the sons of men God test them that they may see that they themselves are like animals. For what happens to the sons of men also happens to the animals. One thing befalls them. As one dies, so dies the other. Surely they all have one breath. Man has no advantage over animal, for all is vanity. Let's take out the vanity and just say everything that is living can also die. And we are we are we are not the same because we are his people we are his kingdom we are to worship god animals aren't they will they will <laughs> he says that the rocks will praise him he doesn't need us to do it if we're going to be lazy and not want the truth but we are to be better than animals that's another lesson too so let me keep going in 19 for what happens to the sons of men also happens to animals one thing befalls them as one dies so dies the other surely they all have one breath Man has no advantage over animals, for all is vanity. All go to one place, all are from the dust, and all return to dust. Who knows the spirit of the sons of men, which goes upward, and the spirit of the animal, which goes down to the earth? So I perceive that nothing is better than that a man should require, I'm sorry, than a man should rejoice in his own works, for that is his heritage. For who can bring him to see what will happen after him? He doesn't know, what, we don't know what's next. If I hang on to everything that I've done in the past, all of my, um, you know, I was in the military and there were a lot of awards given, rewards, a lot of Bravo Zulu's good job, but I'm not holding on to that. That is not, I don't want to stand on that. We're supposed to be looking at the infinite, which is eternity, but we don't see that because we're laboring, we're toiling, we're comparing, we're worried about who's going to get it when I'm gone. You know, and here he's wrong. King Solomon, who is wise, but right here he says, everything turns, uh, returns to dust. And that is true. But what of the soul? 
<clears throat> chapter 4. Then I returned and considered all the oppression that is done under the sun. And look, the tears of the oppressed, but they have no comforter. On the side of their oppressors, there is power, but they have no comforter. Therefore, I praise the dead who are already dead, more than the living who are still alive. Yet better than both is he who has never existed, who has not seen the evil work that is done under the sun. Do you hear what King Solomon is saying? He's saying um, it is better to not be born at all so that you would not know of these evil works. And he's saying that the oppressed um, have no no comforter. But there is. This is the the Old Testament. So Jesus hasn't entered the scene just yet. Of course he has, but not right here in King Solomon's um, outlook. So he's he's being very pessimistic and he's be being very curt with telling us what his eyes see, what what he can touch, what he can see, what he can answer to. He's not speaking of faith just yet. The vanity of selfish toil. Again, I saw that for all the toil and every skillful work a man is envied by his neighbor. This also is vanity and grasping for the wind to work for praise. The fool folds his hands and consumes his own flesh. Better a handful with quietness than both hands fold together with toil and grasping for the wind. Then I returned and I saw vanity under the sun. There is one alone without companion. He has neither son nor brother. Yet there is no end to all his labors. Nor is his eye satisfied with riches. But he never asks, For whom do I toil and deprive myself of good? This also is vanity and a grave misfortune. The value of a friend. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they, f if they fall, one will lift up his, co his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. But you do, you have, <laughs> I'm trying to be careful what I add, because we are in the Old Testament. And this is King Solomon's perspective, his outlook. But there is Jesus for us. Um, so you're truly never alone. But it is good for man to have help helpers. It is good for men to find their their partner with, with the story of Adam and Eve. It isn't good for us to do everything alone. But we're truly never alone. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. The more people we add, of course, it's stronger. But again, I'll emphasize we're truly never alone. And God will keep us warm. But it's that that ability to ask him for it, to know that he is a giver and a protector, a, a nurturer, and wants to provide for you. Popularity passes away. Better a poor and wise youth than an old foolish king who will be admonished no more. For he comes out of prison to be king. Although he was born poor in his kingdom, I saw all the living who will walk under the sun. They were there. They were with the second youth who stands in his place. There was no end of all the people over whom he was made king. Yet those who come afterward will not rejoice in him. Surely this also is vanity and grasping for the wind. Chapter 5. Fear God, keep your vows. Walk prudently when you go to the house of God, and draw near to hear rather than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they do not know that they do evil. Do not rash do not be rash with your mouth, and let not your heart utter anything hastily hastily before God, for God is in heaven and you on earth. Therefore let your words be few, for a dream comes through much activity, and a fool's voice is known by his many words. When you make a vow to God, do not delay to pay it, for he has no pleasure in fools. Pay what you have vowed. So it is better not to not to uh, commit than to commit and not see it through, especially to God. So he, he advises to that it is better to be silent and not to say anything at all than to make a vow and not follow through. Do not let your mouth cause your flesh to sin, nor say before the messenger of God that it was an error. Why should God be angry at your excuse and destroy the work of your hands? For in the multitude of dreams and many words, there is also vanity. But fear God. 
the vanity of, of gain and honor. If you see the oppression of the poor and the violent perversion of justice and righteousness in a province, do not marvel at the matter. For high official watches over high official and higher officials are over them. Moreover, the profit of the land is for all. Even the king is served from the field. He who loves silver will not be satisfied with silver, nor he who loves abundance will increase. This is also vanity. They'll always want more. Like the more money you make, the more money we spend. When goods increase, they increase who eat them. So what profit have the owners except to see them with their eyes? I sometimes like when it's just me and my son. Like I know exactly how much food we have, and we have enough, and that's it. But if I fill up the fridge, and more people know that there's abundance coming out of there, more people come in, and they're all partaking of that. So when goods increase, they increase. So it's also like the the responsibility. Um, the more you get the more you want and you're still never satisfied and that is the hunt for the meaning of life the for joy like looking to be happy you're truly never really happy if you're if you're if this is your outlook let's continue the sleep of a laboring man is sweet whether he eats little or much but the abundance of the rich will not permit him to sleep there is a severe evil which i have seen under the sun Riches kept for their owner to his hurt. But those riches perish through misfortune. When he begets a son, there is nothing in his hand. As he came from his mother's womb, naked shall he return to go as he came. And he shall take nothing from his labor, which he may carry away in his hand. And this also is a severe evil. Just exactly as he came, so shall he go. And what profit has he who has labored for the wind? All his days he also eats in darkness, and he has much sorrow and sickness and anger yes on earth all of this is true on earth but again he's not the goal is not heaven yet the goal is in eternity it's um i'm gonna die and i want to take all of this with me and um how wrong it, it's it's grim right here god isn't in the in the story he is but he's not mentioned yet as the the focus as uh god yet um, instead, he's looking at it as a start and a finish. Verse 18. Here's what I have seen. It is good and fitting for one to eat and drink and to enjoy the good of all his labor in which he toils under the sun all the days of his life, which God gives him, for it is his heritage. It's for every man to whom God has given riches and wealth and given him power to eat of it, to, per to receive his heritage and rejoice in his labor. This is the gift of God, for he will not dwell unduly on the days of his life because God keeps him busy with the joy of his heart. If the joy is success and the joy is money and I keep working morning, noon, and night and I'm just putting money away and not enjoying what I'm working for, yes, it would be all for nothing. But God doesn't give us these blessings just to toil. He does want you to celebrate and enjoy it, to stop. Because time is fleeting and it's going to get away from you. And you're going to look back and you will have not enjoyed what what was blessed to you. Um, so I don't agree right here that that, that, that is a heritage that um, is uh, meaningless. There still is an importance to have traditions and pass down things. Uh, to work for something that is valuable and to leave it to your legacy. That There's nothing wrong with that. Let me continue. Chapter 6. There is an evil which I have seen under the sun, and it is common among men, a man to whom God has given riches and wealth. Honor so that he lacks nothing for himself of all he desires, yet God does not give him power to eat of it. But a foreigner consumes it. This is vanity, and, oh, and it is an evil affliction. I just want to talk about everything going on in the world right now that is like we don't want to share. If a man begets a hundred children and lives many years so that the days of his years are many, but his soul is not satisfied with goodness or indeed he has no burial, I say that a stillborn child is better than he, for it comes in vanity and departs in darkness, and its name is covered with darkness. Though it has not seen the sun, of the sun or known anything, this has more rest than that man 
even if he lives a thousand years twice, but has not, not seen goodness, do not all go to one place. All the labor of, of man is for his mouth, and yet the soul is not satisfied. Um, for what more has the wise man than the fool? Um, let me just read. What does the poor man have? Who knows how to walk before the living? Better is the sight of the eyes than the wandering of desire. Of desire. Let me read this again because it's the light and the poor highlighter right here. All the labor of a man is for his mouth, and yet the soul is not satisfied. For what more has the wise man than the fool? What does the poor man have? Who knows how to walk before the living? Better is the sight of the eyes than the wandering of desire. This also is vanity and grasping for the wind. Whatever one is, he has been named already. For it is known that he is man, and he cannot contend with him who is mightier than he. Since there are many things that increase vanity, how is man the better? For who knows what is good for man in life, all the days of his, of his vain life, which he passes like a shadow. Who can tell a man what will happen after him under the sun? That void, that soul that is supposed to be filled up with something spiritual. And it's when you add God into the picture that you can truly see that it's starting to be filled and that your joy should be changing um, because you're putting it in the right place. Um, because if the goal is heaven, then you know that. Oh, let me just leave it. Chapter 7. A good name is better than precious ointment. And the day of death than that day of one's birth. So it is better to die than um, to be born. If we were comparing like King Solomon. Better to go to the house of the morning than to go to the house of, of feasting. For that is the end of all men. And the living will take it to heart. Sorrow is better than laughter. For by a sad countenance, the heart is made better. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools in the house of myrrh. This is this is important right here. What did I write? I wrote it. Um, when you go to a funeral, you consider uh, your end. You consider uh, losses. And in birth, you're celebrating life, but death reminds us what is important. A sad countenance that a heart is made better. And it does happen like that. It's almost like everybody that goes to a morning of viewing a funeral. You stop and you have to uh, think about the meaning of life. And it is better to go to that place and to grow, um, to have more depth to you, to than to go to a celebration, he says. You learn more. Okay, so let me continue. Okay. It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools. For like the crackling of thorns under a pot, so is laughter of the fool. This also is vanity. Surely oppression destroys a wise man's reason, and a bribe debases the heart. The end of the thing is better than the beginning. One second. Okay. <clears throat> the end of the thing is better than its beginning. The patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Do not hasten in your spirit to be angry, for anger rests in the bosom of fools. Do not say, why were the former days better than these? For you do not inquire wisely concerning this. Wisdom is good with an inheritance and profitable to those who see the sun. For wisdom is a defense as money is a defense. But the excellence of knowledge is that wisdom gives life to those who have it. <clears throat> Consider the work of God, for who can make straight what he has made crooked? In the day of prosperity, be joyful, but in the day of adversity, consider. Surely God has appointed the one as well as the other, so that man can find out nothing that will come after him. I have seen everything in my days of vanity. There is a just man who perishes in his righteousness, and there is a wicked man who prolongs life in his wickedness. Do not be overly righteous, nor be overly wise. Why should you destroy yourself? Do not be overly wicked, nor be foolish. Why should you die before your time? It is good that you grasp, grasp this, 
and also not remove your hand from the from the other. For he who fears God will escape them all. Wisdom strengthens the wise more than ten rulers of the city. For there is not a just man on earth who does good and does not sin. But we are all sinners. 21. Also, do not take heart everything people say, lest you hear your servant cursing you. For many times also your own heart has known that even you have cursed others. All that I have proved by wisdom, I said, I will be wise. But it was far from me, as for that which is far off and exceedingly deep. Who can find it out? I applied my heart to know, to search and seek out wisdom and the reasons of things, to know the wickedness of folly, even the foolishness of madness, and I find more bitter, and I find more bitter than death. The woman whose heart is, is snares and nets, whose hands are fetters, he who pleases God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be trapped by her. Um, the sinner, the one seeking his pleasures. Um, but here, so it's the search of the meaning of life that Solomon is talking about. Um, but he also says, his heart is applied to seeking wisdom. It's not applied to seeking God. And that is where he, he realizes he's um, he's kind of messed things up in his search and not put his focus in the right place yet. Because in this search for wisdom, you can read and read and read and know and you still not be satisfied. Here's what I have found, says the preacher, King Solomon. Adding one thing to another to find out the reason, which my soul still seeks, but I cannot find. One man among a thousand I have found, but a woman among all these I have not found. Truly this only I have found, that God made man upright, but they have sought out many schemes. God provided us with everything that we need, but in our search for uh, pleasure and joy and to be, ha I want to be happy. Everybody wants to be happy. He had 700 wives and 200 concubines. And in that time, a concubine was basically a servant that if, King Solomon wanted to sleep with him. He had 200 women he can sleep with. And he was never satisfied. But in the beginning, God made Adam and Eve, Eve from Adam, to be his partner in life. And it was one spouse, 900. And he still wasn't satisfied. Chapter 8. Who is like a wise man? And who knows the interpre interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom makes his face shine. And the sternness of his face is changed. Um... That makes me think of somebody who's just is just looking over like the workers and looking over everything he owns and scowling. You don't know anybody that does that on TV. No precedent. <clears throat> Obey authorities for God's sake. Chapter 8, verse 2. I say, keep the king's commandments for the sake of your oath to God. Do not be hasty to go from his presence. Do not take your stand for an evil thing, for he does whatever pl pleases him. <clears throat> yeah for evil will only um seek out their their selfish um what is carnal what makes them happy <clears throat> verse four where the word of a king is there is power and who may say to him what are you doing who will question the king five he who keeps his command will experience nothing harmful and a wise man's heart discerns both time and judgment because for every matter there is a time and judgment though the misery of a man increases greatly for he does not know what will happen so who can tell him when it will occur no one has power over the spirit to retain the spirit and no one has power in the day of death there is no release from that war and wickedness will not deliver those who are given to it we will all meet that that fate to pass away and to meet uh, God in judgment this is what is happening here. Um, all this I have seen and applied my heart to every work that is done under the sun. There is a time in which one man rules over another to his own heart. Oh, to his own hurt. Death comes to all. Then I saw the wicked buried who had come and gone from the place of holiness. And they were forgotten in the city where they had so done. This also is vanity, because the sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. 
though a sinner does evil a hundred times and his days are prolonged yet i surely know that it will be well with those who fear god who fear before him but it will not be well with the wicked nor will he prolong his days which are as a shadow because he does not fear before god there is vanity which occurs on earth that there are just men to whom it happens according to all the work of the wicked again there are wicked men to whom it happens according to the work of the righteous i said that this is also vanity we all still um, meet death so i commended enjoyment because i'm sorry so i commended enjoyment because a man has nothing better under the sun than to eat drink and be merry for this will remain with him in his labor all the days of his life which god gives him under the sun um but there is also working for it enjoying it enjoying it and remember there is a time for everything that there still is that relationship that we're not talking about our eyes are not in the right place he is going to he is looking up he is looking to like changing his perspective um let me keep reading please leave me comments um I look for them, just like a critique, please. Or if you have any questions, maybe we can find it together. So I commended enjoyment because a man has nothing better under the sun than to eat, drink, and be merry. For this will remain with him in his labor all the days of his life, which God gives him under the sun. When I applied my heart to know wisdom and to see the business that is done on earth, even though one sees no sleep day or night, then I saw all the work of God, that a man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun. For though a man labors to discover it, discover it yet, he will not find it. Moreover, though a wise man attempts to know it, he will not be able to find it. Looking in all the wrong places. <laughs> Chapter 9. For I considered all this in my heart, so that I could declare it all, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of God. People know neither love nor hatred by anything they see before them. All things come alike to all. One event happens to the righteous and the wicked, to the good, the clean, and the unclean, to him who sacrifices and him who does not sacrifice. As is good, so is the sinner. As is the, as is the good, so is the sinner. He who takes an oath, as he who fears an oath. This is an evil in all that is done under the sun that one thing happens to all. Truly the hearts of the sons of men are full of evil. Madness is in their hearts while they live and after that they go to the dead. But for him who is joined to all the living, there is hope for a, a living dog, for a living dog is better than a dead lion. For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing and they have no more reward for the memory of them is forgotten. Also their love, their hatred, and their envy have now perished. Nevermore will they have a share in anything done under the sun. Go eat your bread with joy and drink your wine with a merry heart. For God had already accepted your works. Let your garments always be white and let your head lack no oil. Um, live joyfully with a wife whom you love all the days of your vain life which he has given you under the sun all your days of vanity for that is your portion in life and in the labor which you perform under the sun whatever your hand finds to do do it with your might for there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going can't take it with you enjoy it while you can i returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift nor the battle to the strong nor bread to the wise nor riches to men of understanding nor favor to men of skill but time and chance happen to them all for man also does not i'm sorry for man also does not know his time like fish taken in a cruel net like birds caught in a snare so the sons of men are snared in an evil time when it falls suddenly upon them you can't plan for it <clears throat> wisdom superior to folly this wisdom i have also seen under the sun and it seemed great to me there was a little city with few men in it and a great king against it besieged it and built great snares around it 
Now there was found in it a poor wise man, and he by his wisdom delivered the city. Yet no one remembered that same poor man. Then I said, Wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heard. Words of the wise spoken quietly should be heard. Rather than shout of a ruler of fools, wisdom is better than weapons of war. But one sinner destroys much good. Chapter 10. Dead flies putrefy the perfumer's ointment and cause it to give off a foul odor. So does a little folly to one respected for wisdom and honor. Um, I'll just say I know that very well. You can work and work and do really well. And then you meet, I like the word calamity, you meet um, a mistake. You did something that put you in the wrong uh, wrong light. You have sinned. You you made a mistake. Usually, um, usually a mistake is a mistake. But you still always be remembered for that thing instead of all your good works. A wise man's heart is in his right hand, but a fool's heart at his left. Even when a fool walks along the way, he lacks wisdom, and he shows everyone that he is a fool. If the spirit of the ruler rises against you, do not leave your post, for consolation pacifies great offenses. There is an evil I have seen under the sun, as an error proceeding from the ruler. Folly is set in great dignity, while the rich sit in a lowly place. I have seen servants on horses, while princes walk on the ground like servants. He who digs a pit will fall into it, and whoever breaks through a wall will be bitten by a serpent. He who quarries stones may be hurt by them, and he who splits wood may be endangered by it, if the axe is dull. And one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength, but wisdom brings success. A serpent might bite when it is not charmed. The babbler is no different. The words of a wise man's mouth are gracious, but the lips of a fool shall swallow him up. The words of his mouth begin with foolishness, and the end of his talk is raving madness. A fool also multiplies words. Um, no man knows what is to be. Who can tell him what will be after him? The labor of fools worries them, for they do not even know how to go to the city. Woe to you, O land, when your king is a child, and your princes feast in the morning. Blessed are you, O land, when your king is the son of nobles, and your princes feast at the proper time. For strength and not for drunkenness, because of laziness the building decays, and through idleness of hands the house leaks. A feast is made for laughter, and wine makes merry, but money answers everything. Do not curse the king, even in your thought. Do not curse the rich, even in your bedroom. For a bird of the air may carry your voice, and a bird in flight may tell the matter. The value of diligence. Um, it got very, um, words to live by, and I didn't want to add commentary, but please go back to it again and again. <laughs> the value of diligence, chapter 11. Cast your bread upon the waters, for you will find it after many days. Give a serving to seven and also to eight, for you do not know what evil will be on the earth. If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if a tree falls to the south or the north, in the place where the trees fall, there it shall lie. He who observes the wind will not sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. As you do not know what is the way of the wind, or how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with child, so you do not know the works of God, who makes everything. In the morning, sow your seed. And in the evening, do not withhold your hand. For you do not know which he will prosper, either this or that. Or whether both alike will be good. You don't know what's going to happen to the person next to you that you're comparing yourself to. Truly the light is sweet, and it is pleasant for the eyes to behold the sun. But if a man lives many years, and rejoices in them all, Yet let him remember the days of darkness, for they will be many. All this, all that is coming is vanity. Seek God in early life. This is verse 9. Rejoice, O young man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes, but know that for all these God will bring you into judgment. Therefore, remove sorrow from your heart and put away evil from your flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity.
It isn't forever. Childhood and youth. We will grow old. <clears throat> and everything we do will be brought into judgment. Like I can't hide anything from God that I've done. I may be able to sit here and read with you. And I might be able to sit here and read all of these commandments and all of these laws that I should be following. And you might think that I do a good job, but you have no idea of all the mistakes I made or the misfortune that has met my life. And so God does. And so for that reason, I just um, try to check myself to stay humble because I know it's, it's going to be something I have to answer for. But I didn't know that when I wasn't looking in the right direction. Chapter 12. Remember now your creator in the days of your youth. Before the difficult days come and the years draw near, when you say, I have no pleasure in them, while the sun and the light, the moon and the stars are not darkened, and the clouds do not return after the rain, in the day when the keepers of the house tremble, and the strong men bow down, when the grinders cease because they are few, and those that look through the windows grow dim, when the doors are shut in the streets, and the sound of grinding is low, when one rises up at the sound of a bird, and all the daughters of music are brought low. Also they are afraid of height and of terrors in the way. When the almond tree blossoms, the grasshopper is a burden and desire fails. For man goes to his eternal home and the mourners go about the streets. Remember your creator before the silver cord is loosed or the golden bowl is broken or the pitcher shattered at the fountain or the wheel broken at the well. Then the dust will return to the earth as it is as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. Vanity of vanity, says the preacher. All is vanity when put in the wrong place, and he recognizes that in the end. Um, I'm just thinking about like all the war right now, and if you look back and all the structures that after war are just laid there, and they all tell a story, but it all is still it all still meant death and you you have to ask yourself where are all these people what happened to them where did they go and then i pray that we have the right answer which is um we had to go meet our creator and be put under judgment the whole duty of man and moreover and no but let me keep going and moreover because the preacher was wise he still taught the people knowledge. Yes, he pondered and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find accept, acceptable words, and what was written was upright words of truth. The words of the wise are like goads, and the words of scholars are like well-driven nails given by the shepherd. And further, my son, be admonished by these. Of making many books, there is no end, and much study is wearisome to the flesh. And then we go into his final conclusion after all of that. Remember all the all that he had done, all his successes, everything he he um, saw and and his philosophies. This is his conclusion. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is man's all. It is man's everything. It is man's goal to worship and honor God because He is our Creator, and in that way. We can truly um, say we know the meaning of life and be certain of our future, which I hope and pray that you have the faith that saying that prayer it is true. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, every secret thing, whether good or evil. That was Ecclesiastes 1 through 12, and it is so good. Like I will read it again, and I know I spoke a lot, but it's just because I. I want you to, I don't want to ramble like a fool. And I don't want to keep, keep a truth that you could use. So as always, I just pray you take care of yourself. You're good to yourself. Love yourself. And that we remember to put our eyes on the end goal, on God. God bless you. Bye.